Hi, it's Ursula from Ursula-Smith.com, and I thought I was done with stamping foam, but I'm back with another idea. So I'm wondering if you have a stencil, so this is a hand-cut one that I made um, using a digital cutter and layering it together. Um, I'm not sure whether I'm going to end up using this. I might just grab just a normal stencil because I'm figuring that's what most people have. But I'm wondering if I could use that with the stamping foam. I'm thinking I'm going to have to press into something soft. So I'm going to go off and try and find something to press into to kind of get the, this foam through the image on the stencil. So I will be back. So I'm back and I decided I am going to try just uh, an off the shelf uh, stencil. So this one is Tim Holtz Stampers Anonymous uh, Diamond Shifter Diamond Layering Stencil. And then this is something that I, I, I could use another one of these, um, but I only have two of them and one I'm in the process of using for another project. So um, I found this, I don't even know if they still make this. Um, I used to love this stuff because I would cut it. I'd cut it with die, my die cut machine into different um, shapes and use those as kind of like little mini stamps, foam stamps. Um, but this is Ink Central, in, Ink Essentials Cut and Dry Stamp Foam. So um, I think that's soft enough rather than sacrificing one of my other stamping foams to use for this process. So we are going to, that was a stencil of my own. Um, so I think what I'm, the way that I'm gonna handle this is I'm gonna leave the stencil on the craft foam. I'm gonna heat this up and then turn it over and press it into the stencil. So let's give that a shot. So I'm gonna heat this up in the air, trying to avoid my fingers if at all possible. And again, I'm heating it not only to make it soft to imprint the design, but also to get rid of the design that was there already. And basically when that design is gone, you know that it's pretty much ready to print. But I'm going to take the care to try and get the whole thing heated. And then take this, flip it over, and print into the stencil. I might have wanted to um, actually use a stamping platform to add and disperse some of the pressure for something like this, but we'll see how this works. Sweet. Cool. Oh, and I think, oh, all right, so this was a layering stencil. <laughs> Yay! I was wondering if that would happen. It actually did pick up the lines. This, this is a stencil where you stencil and then you kind of move and line up these lines with the design and then you stencil again so it you, know, you kind of shift it over and so you can just come on focus there we go you can just see the hint of those lines so i it'll be interesting to see how this prints and then you can also see the texture of the foam underneath. So, and again, the whole reason I used the foam underneath was I felt like I could press it in harder and get a little bit more of a raised image. It's still not super raised because the stencil's so thin. So that's why originally my plan was to take the double layer stencil and try that because it would just give it a thicker design. But We'll, we'll go ahead and we'll see how this will print. Okay, I'm back and I have a Distress Oxide ink pad in Mermaid Lagoon. And so we're just gonna rub over the back or over the stamp that we just made. 
And again, this may be a little bit too shallow. So I was pressing a little bit too hard and I think this is just gonna be a big old fat mess. So I'm actually not gonna use, if I can find some scrap paper that I don't care about. So let's just print this just so you can see. So this is a print I'm not sure I'm gonna end up using. Um, and so I'm just gonna use the other side of it. And then we can clean it and try again with a lighter hand when we ink. So actually, <laughs> I kind of like the look of that. Um, and then again, even with the distress resist, I probably would like the looks of that. So let's go ahead and I'm trying to decide if I want to clean it. I guess I'll just, I'm just going to do a quick clean and then we will re-ink and reprint. So same thing, bring the ink pad across and I'm trying to go a little bit lighter. I should come from off the side. And again, if I wanted to, I could take a damp paper towel and just try to soften up those ridges, you know, the remnants, I call them ink pad remnants, especially with uh, not, things that are not deeply etched. It's really hard to ink a design without getting those, especially direct, direct to, in this case, foam, um, you just using the ink pad itself. And then we can print. And if this is the first time that you're watching me print this way, um, a lot of times if it's a fine detail image or a large detail image, I take the paper to the stamp and then use a bone folder to spread out the pressure across the entire surface area. And there we go. So a lot less of that ink pad ink. So it's kind of up to you what, which way you like it. And then as usual, I could bring in some spray stains and let me go with, let's see, this is Festive Berries. And what else do I got laying around? Abandoned Coral, that may be too. Yeah, that's kind of close. But you get the idea. You've seen me do this like a million times. Old paper. A little bit of water if you want. And there's the resist. And I probably would spray, still spray some more. And then you can even add drips to it. But you get the idea. So that looks like it, it worked. You just have to play around, especially if you're using just a single layer stencil. This is the same thing as embossing. I know I've done this before too, where you emboss with stencils. Um, because the stencil is so thin, if you don't have the option of doubling and triple layering the stencil to emboss with, it, as the same here, it's just gonna be a shallower impression and just a little bit harder on the inking side. But still works, um, and especially with something that is this kind of design, I think it's fine. So anyway, uh, thanks for joining me. We'll see you next time. So I'm back, and I decided that um, just to be completely thorough, I am gonna try and take this stencil, I have a goober, 
Got a little piece of something. There we go. Um, so this is one I cut myself. It's at least two layers thick, possibly three, but I think it's only two. Um, and I'm going to try to see if I get a thicker impression that's easier to bring ink on top of after the fact. So we are going to do the same thing that we did before. We're going to bring in the cut and dry foam to stamp into. We're going to lay the stencil on the cut and dry foam and we're going to keep this till the design disappears. And then we're going to press this into the stencil. I think the stencil might actually be bigger than this piece of foam, but it's just a test, so we'll, we'll work with it. And then quickly and again, I probably should have used a plate or something on top to disperse the pressure. And you'll notice I, I have another design on the other side. This does not seem to affect it so far anyway. So that's good news because I really like that print. Okay, so there's the design. It still looks a little shallow, but probably a little bit thicker than the single layer. And let's give it a shot. Where is my ink pad? Here's my ink pad. And yeah, I mean, I still get some of the ink pad remnants, but it seems to be a little bit better than the single layer, which probably what you would expect and if you have the option and you have a digital cutter where you can cut your own and want to go ahead and try to do three layers I'm sure that would probably be even easier and I'm just cleaning up some of those ink pad remnants and I uh, yay have a piece of paper at the ready Bring it on top, use my bone folder to pick up the ink. And the only tricky part about doing the stamping this way is you, you notice I stop, hold it, move my fingers, or move the bone folder. So you've got to be careful not to shift the paper. And there we go. And to be a little bit thorough, again, if we wanted to use this as an image, I'd probably pull some in from the side so there wasn't as much blank space with no distress oxide. Something to the effect of that. And then, again, just to be consistent, we can bring in, now I've forgotten, I think we were using festive berries. We can go in with the spray stain and some old paper. I usually like to do a couple of different colors because I think it adds a little bit of variability and even over the distress oxide, sometimes you'll get a different effect. Um, Water also will add some drips and drops, and then it will also increase the oxide or the oxidation of the distress oxide. And so, yeah, so that is the double layer versus the single layer using a stencil. So just a little bit easier to ink. So if you have that option, it's probably worth giving it a shot. Thanks for joining me. See you next time.